Hello. Welcome. 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 Welcome to the Renee Allen and Friends Show. To the Renee Allen and Friends Show. We have a wonderful guest in the studio. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome. Right. Mwah. Hi. Ooh. 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 Renee. Hi, I'm Dr. Renee Starlin Allen, the host of the Renee Allen and Friends Show here on WLVS Radio, the largest online radio broadcast in the United States. Well, you know, this platform is for people to really know what's going on, you know, not just locally, but globally. Oh, I love it. You know, they say you're the, the man's the head, but we're the neck. And we like, we put them wherever we want to put them. Is that true? Yes, ma'am, it is. <laughs> I want you to just talk about a few pieces okay. and then the fundraiser, because that's what I'm excited about. Okay. Because we forgot about love. Beautiful love. Bringing you the best in entertainment, entrepreneurship, business owners, the whole gamut. It's so exciting. I am so impressed. The vibrancy in the car and the details. Can we hold one up? Oh, absolutely. I'll hold on. Oh I'll hold up one of my absolute favorites. So you really can't judge a book by its cover. And pageants are about beauty and brains and what you can bring to the platform. Because girl, when you're here. Goes wrong. Yes, I need you Bringing you the finest in chefs in the DMV. Smoke pool pork. Mm. So everybody wave to your parents. <laughs> you are looking at Somerset's finest, the sophisticated ladies. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. And I hope to see you on my set one day. Thank you. God bless you. And we're going to be doing a lot of collaboration and a lot of great things together. Glory to God. Bam! Boom! Cut out! Oh, yeah! We right here, y'all. Something you never had, you can do something you've never done. Yes. yes. We going to sing right here. Miss Renee Show. Yeah! Miss Renee. Oh, yeah! We going to do it here. Why he ain't listen vision, y'all? Oh yeah, Miss Renee. I like how you sing it. Thank you, Mustafa. Girl, I like how you sing it now. Thank you, Mustafa. And where we at now, Miss Renee? Show. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Renee Allen and Friends Show, our first show for 2020, our new year. Come on, y'all. As you can see, I lost my voice New Year's Day, so it's coming back. It's about 40% there. Can you hear me? Can you understand me? Bam, boom, pat out. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with this voice. People are telling me I sound like Tina Turner. Yeah, right. <laughs> if I had them legs, I'd be up here dancing for y'all. But look, I just wanted to say Happy New Year. I'm so happy to be here back at WLVS, the largest online radio broadcast in the United States. They are my family. I extend a lot of opportunities here, and, and I keep this platform because it is a real platform for real talent, etc. Now, let me tell you something else. I'm going to come out the box and just tell you, I had a lot of experiences over the past couple of months, one of which I'm not going to say the name, although I'm known to bring a name out, but there was a particular media person who said, oh, Renee just only has that online show. Why are you hiring her? Why are you dressing her? Well, let me tell you, boo, because this is real. Online, on the toilet, I don't care where you're at. People are real, and it, you don't make yourself from your title or who you hide behind, whether it's a radio station, online podcast. It doesn't matter. When I, when I think about what you said to this person, all I can think of is that I've lost so much respect for you, but I also pray for you and want you to still succeed because that's how I roll. But let me tell you, this online radio broadcast I am proud of, and I have been on here for almost five years. We'll be celebrating that in about a month or so. And it is a real deal, holy field. Jeremy Beaver has given so many opportunities on this platform. People have moved on and doing well. Move on gracefully. Move on with love in your heart, without hate in your breath. Because this is a huge trajectory, stepping stone, and springboard 
for many people that have come and many people who are coming. So get it together, y'all. Speak positive. Be positive. Be grateful for what God gives you, no matter what platform it is. That's your duty, and I'm honored to be here. So um, God bless everybody. Hope everything's starting out great on your new year. I wanted to um, just give my love and um, safe travels to Dr. Jazz, dear friend of mine at Victory Grace Center. She's going to Nigeria. She is the TD Jakes, female TD Jakes with red bottom heels on. Bam, boom, put out. That's my girl. And um, also, my girl Vivian Avakova, designer extraordinaire, who's another good friend of mine who will be leaving for China. She did to her China, Dubai, one of those. <laughs> but they are both powerhouse women who pour into me and I pour into them. And I love like minded real women. So God bless you both. Um, what's your goals and resolutions, y'all? Now, it's been a week since we have been into the new year. What are you doing to change your trajectory? What are you doing? You know, the, the, the average thing is I'm going to lose some weight or I'm going to stop doing this or stop eating bread or, you know, make your resolutions and your goals when you feel them in your gut and in your heart so you know you're going to take the effort and make the effort to make them come true. Don't fall into the, you know, rah-rah of, New Year's to make something happen for yourself. There's 365 days. So what I'd like you to do, think about what you want to happen. Get a piece of paper. Put on one side your short goals and put on the other side your long-term goals. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but Dr. Jazz always quotes T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes, um, who, by the way, will be here on Friday. I hope to see him. And they say you have to think in decades, working years, I know I'm, I'm not going to get this right, but the bottom line is you can't think about 2030 in 2030. You should have been thinking about 2020, five, ten years ago. So you think about what you want to do now, start working backwards from 2030 and start implementing and going after what you want. It's not going to happen because you're thinking about it. It's going to happen because, like Dr. London says, you write it down and take action and do something about it. I am hope I'm resonating with somebody because I'm feeling something today and I really want everyone to win and it's not just because I'm a female in this position it's because I'm an oldest of three girls my my whole childhood was taking care of women and making sure they didn't fall and get hurt and I was accountable for women so it's real for me it parlayed into my adulthood I really want you to win and don't let anyone try to dull your shine and the haters and the and the, all the shade that's to help you to put fire under your coattail to rise it can't be easy you're not going to step somewhere and just it's done like that you got to have some adversities you got to get over some hurdles you're going to get there trust me Okay. Um, the other thing is, uh, congratulations to doctors Emmanuel and uh, Oge Irono. Amazing couple. Just celebrated their 25th anniversary, the TIS Foundation. Oh my God. And they had a fundraiser for who's on the screen now the councilman at large, Melvin Franklin of Prince George's County, also had a big um, celebration and fundraiser for our. First black female county executive in Prince George's County. I think I have her picture as well, DJ. And I'm so proud of them both. I've known them for um, quite a few years. Um, not not that one. Um, it's Pre Prince George's. Um, that's okay. Prince George's. This is live, y'all. We just go with the flow. Prince George's proud. And that's um, Angela also broke. Wonderful woman. Integrity driven. Mother, sister, daughter. Uh, she's about the, the county, and she's making a big difference in it. God bless her and Melvin Franklin and all of the politicians who are uh, truly doing God's work. Um, also, we did see Melanie Gamble, DJ Child, and she is at this one here. I don't know what to call her. She's so many things in my life, but she is, you know, a woman of God. She is the owner of her and broker and owner of her own realty company. She is an author. She is showing people how to get 
ownership of your home. I don't care if it's a shack. I don't care if it's a mansion. You have to own something in America. You have to own. There's tax write-offs for it. There's things that people don't understand. You can't rent all of your life and get ahead. doesn't make sense. You can't rent an apartment and have a Bentley in the doggone parking lot. What are y'all thinking? Come on now. Make it to her conference and get the golden nuggets you need to learn if you haven't already been taught. It's about learning how to change your life, your mindset, and getting what you deserve before you get to retirement age so then you can live your life in your golden years correctly. So that's Melanie, Melanie Gamble, Dr. Melanie Gamble. Love her. It's a free conference. Please get over there, okay? Put the housewives of whatever down. Put the hip-hop down. I don't care about all that reality stuff. That is just, when I watch that stuff, because I'm not going to be a liar, it's for entertainment when I'm available. I don't write, make my schedule around that hogwash. They're making money, not you. Okay? Get to things like this and change your life. That's all I'm going to say about that. Spectrum Circle, fifth year. That's uh, my girl, Karen Marie Austin. Uh, she was one of my co-hosts along with Alvin Jones and... Timothy Jackson, when I first started five years ago, and she's getting ready to celebrate her fifth year <clears throat> with the Spectrum Circle, which is a phenomenal platform for women. They celebrate and um, give awards and all that, and I'll be there. I'm one of the hostesses. So we're going to take a short break. You're going to hear about my girl, Silver Logan Sharp, one of the former lead singer of Chic Freak Out. You know, I want your love, all that stuff. And she was my first guest five years ago on this very stage. And uh, she comes in from time to time. And I want you to enjoy her music. And we'll be right back with two queens. You don't want to miss this. Questions echo in my mind Won't leave me alone I walk these empty streets at night I'm far away from home I'm living in a no man's land Wandering without a plan Falling when I try to stand I'm fading as I'm waiting It's a lonely world without you And I'm a lonely soul waiting for your return You're the hope that I hold on to I am here you to find me, find me. I see you when I close my eyes. I see you in my dreams. You tell me that in perfect time. Take me from this broken place Come to me and kiss my face Promise me I'll be okay And save me from my breaking It's a lonely world without you And I'm a lonely soul waiting for your return You're the hope that I hold on to broken place come to me and kiss my face promise me I'll be okay and save me from my breaking
home to find me. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Renee Allen and Friends Show on WLVS. You know, if you're just tuning in my voice, I lost it New Year's Eve, so it's just coming back. Hello. So I can't do my woo. <laughs> but I tried it for you. Listen, I'm sitting here with the amazing queens, uh, and, and, and I want you to share what you said when we sat down during break. You gave me so many chills in that first segment, and especially the thinking about what we're going to do in 2030 now. Mm-hmm. Meg and I looked at each other and we were like, that's <laughs> yes. it. Yeah. That's Come on. it. That's Dr. Jazz and yes. that's Dr. Um, Bishop T.D. Jakes. I mean, I always give credit where credit is, credit is due. And when I heard that come out of her mouth at the Victory Grace Center, I was like, bam, boom, put out. I mean, just like you felt and you felt. Yep. Because who thinks that way? You know? I'm going to start thinking yeah. about myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you for bringing that up. But listen, I'm here, and I want to thank my girl, um, Raquel Riley Thomas, uh, who is my friend, dear sister, uh, way before all this pageant stuff. And um, she is responsible for the platforms of these wonderful, intelligent, brilliant, beautiful women. So I want to give her a little uh, kudos, too. She is our leader extraordinaire. Yes. So ladies, would you introduce yourselves? Sure, I'm Megan Ampu. I'm the current Miss DC for America, first ever uh, Miss DC for America. So um, when I'm not a queen, actually, I guess I'm always a queen. But when I'm not actually wearing the crown, I'm the director of business development for an IT firm, um, working with the government and working on, um, you know, increasing and helping with IT stuff within government areas. So um, yeah. love platforms, love doing charity service, love um, love all of this, and so it's uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, and thank the you. First ever. Yes. First ever. Miss DC for America. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Nikki Noya, Miss yeah. DC America 2019, and uh, I'm also the host and executive producer of the Jet Set. Yay. And also, yay! So <laughs> I am. I get to. I have a dream job. I get to be the host of a travel show. Yes. So I get to go all over the world and highlight <laughs> travel. And now I'm here with you. Yes, Yes. I am too. Because listen, y'all, I was there as co-host with Rick Bernstein. He is, um, what is his? He's the voice of DC. The voice of DC. And with Dr. Allen, the people's MC. And we, (laughs) we, yeah, we dream team that Kennedy Center every year. (laughs) How amazing was that to be at the Kennedy Center? Again, first year, first year Miss DC and first year at the Kennedy Center. That's amazing. Yeah, we're doing some big things. And um, so to see you both, you know, crowned, I really wanted to have you here together, right? Yes. So let's talk about, you know, we'll start with you since you were crowned first that evening. And and share with the people, you know, how it felt that night, first of all, to be crowned, and then your platform. Sure. So it was such an incredible experience to be at the Kennedy Center, to Mm. be backstage. There were so many nerves going on, especially like walking out in a swimsuit to begin with. (laughs) You put on the gown and I was like, all right, I'm good. You know, we we have the confidence. And, um, you know, I was called um, as Fabulous Face winner and then I was called in the top four. So I was actually called twice. And so I didn't really know what to do. And there was a picture captured where I'm just like, all right, I'm here, you know. So like, this is good. These are these are good signs. Right. So. um, um, when you were announcing, because I think you you were the one who announced, and I think we talked about this a little bit um, before after stay, the first, yeah, before. yeah, before, and and you were, um, so there were two, there were two of us left, and you, you were you were looking at it, and you said, "Poor Steve Harvey." By the way, you said, "I don't want to call a Steve Harvey, uh-uh, not <laughs> poor, me, poor guy." Yeah. And so I'm I'm like looking there, and I'm kind of like trying to look over. Like, <laughs> 
what is my name on there? Yeah. You know? And yeah. then and then you call my name and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most incredible experience of my life. Like I, I didn't really know what to do, so I just smiled. I walked out and I was like, all right, you know. Yeah. And I, I was so thankful because I had a bunch of friends and family mm. there coming to see you me. You had half the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was it was a great it was a great experience. So yeah. thank you for calling <laughs> the, uh, the Miss Capital. <laughs> well, let me tell you, thank you for bringing that up about Steve Harvey because I love some Steve Harvey and I felt his pain because mm-hmm. people don't remember 2500 years of doing great until you mess up one time yeah, right, right. so i love you steve harvey and absolutely love, but what oh I, and by uh, the way for yeah. for him i watched uh, um, something on facebook the other day that and he talked about how he got to where he is and i don't know if you've seen it but oh yeah his car everything super yeah. powerful mm-hmm. so yeah. you know get that out there yeah you know, yeah it's he's true more than just unfortunately saying the wrong name yeah pageant, yeah he's a powerhouse absolutely. and he's not gonna let anything stop him but when you said that i thought about him and you know god will humble you <laughs> right real quick because i'm sitting here y'all with two names but it doesn't have who's the winner i had to call the expert who's been with raquel since day one rick bernstein yep. and i said what's up with this before i say the wrong name <laughs> yep, yep. so it was so and that's why everybody was nervous like what's going on but we wanted to make sure everything went correctly and it's because of steve harvey why i took the time to say i'm not messing up so anyway, um, how are you using your platform? Oh, it's been incredible. First, um, you know, I was in Las Vegas and competed to be um, Miss for America. Mm-hmm. And I came back with the sponsorship award. So um, I am so thankful Yay. for all of the people who have helped sponsor, you know, from tan to makeup to everything. Yeah. Like this is definitely a team sport. Yeah. And, you know, there's a team that goes around it. And so I'm so thankful for all the people who have helped me um, mm-hmm. get there. But so being on stage there was incredible and being able to talk about my platform. And um, I've kind of d- done two different platforms mm-hmm. during during my reign and what I want to they? talk about um Operation XYZ. Yeah. So Operation XYZ gives back to established military charities. Yes, come on now. Yeah, so we did the first. Um, it's called Operation XYZ because um, there are different challenges. So I wanted to challenge myself and then eventually have other people challenge themselves mm-hmm. to give back to that charity. Yeah. So in October, end of October, I ran the 10, um, 10K, the Marine mm-hmm. Corps 10K, wow. and raised money for the Semper Fi Fund, which helps um, you know vets and current military yeah. who are wounded and it's their awesome. families. And so I was able to raise $2,500 dollars for that mm-hmm. and ran ran the 10k race and I mean after getting ready for a pageant you're not really in running shape right. so you know that was a fun two months of like it's kind of getting cold out and we're running but um but that that's been huge and to be able to give back to mm-hmm. military um you know the way that they give back to us which you know is yeah. just um incredible yeah. so i don't know if you know but i'm a 22 year retired veteran did you know that i did know that oh you did oh my god yeah. raquel told you didn't yes <laughs> <laughs> thank you for but, serving yeah, you're yes. welcome you well i salute us. both of you okay <laughs> <laughs> so listen um nikki yes uh you know I, if, correct me if i'm wrong but i heard that you had never ran before is that true well actually speaking of not giving up and god humbling you mm. i was in the mrs florida and i got first runner up and wow. i said you know what we're moving to DC. I'm just gonna give it one more chance. Wow. I just I learned so much. Let me just let me just try mm-hmm. to do this one more time. And I won congeniality, which never <laughs> you never win congeniality and I win. Know. I won fitness and photo and then I didn't uh, I wasn't <laughs> called as a semifinalist, so I kind of went backstage into a million and two pieces yeah. and then they called me back up again the next thing i know you were handing the mic to me and i was answering the question and they put the crown on so i had quite an eventful yeah. night you but, I didn't, did. but i didn't give up and you kind of learn a lot about what you're made of when mm-hmm. you know <laughs> things mm-hmm. don't seem to be going right i do have to say being on this journey with mm-hmm. megan these past months has been extraordinary because we get to do everything together I love and we it. get to yeah. promote the DC America family together mm-hmm. and it's like we go into a room we're like okay let's go divide and conquer and we both <laughs> like kind of go yep. into the room so it's yep. just been an absolutely <laughs> wonderful experience being mm-hmm. able to do this with Megan and I hold I held her hand when she we did. first <laughs> won and everywhere we go it's just so nice having a counterpart and a sister yeah. I'm watching out for her I'm like an older sister mm-hmm. I'm a mom myself yeah. So she's like my little sister. So it's like, I see her. She was where I was like 10 years ago. And I'm like, okay, let's get that job. Let's go get that thing. Let's get it. So we can, we're kind of.
kind of growing together, and it's yeah. just been an extraordinary experience. It's funny you brought that up, Nikki, because Raquel, she is a well, she's for a retired officer, yes. okay, and she believes in that sisterhood, and so she put that new yep. category, and she's going to be doing other things, which I probably can't talk about, <laughs> um, because of sisterhood. So for you to say that, I'm sure she's listening now saying, yes, because that was her whole, you know, um, reason for doing it. Yeah. The women that we have met, not only through our appearances, but also our fellow queens, mm -hmm. going to nationals and meeting all the other women, and also listening to you 10 minutes ago, <laughs> the women that we are exposed to being a part of this it's a once in a lifetime mm -hmm. opportunity. We are we get to go to the most incredible events, yeah. meet the most amazing <laughs> veterans, get to get especially in DC. Yeah. We're in the nation's capital. Yes. We get to go to all Speak these girl. fantastic Speak. things. So I can't say enough about what a wonderful journey it's been. Yeah. And all the amazing women and yeah. empowering yeah. other women. And me also being a mom, I want my daughter to mm. see, oh, mom went out there and she was fearless. Mm. How old is she? She's two. Oh. She's two years old. <laughs> She's, she's the cutest, the she's, cutest little she's girl. She's my inspiration. So I want <laughs> other little girls, teenagers, all women to be like, listen, mm -hmm. Nick gets up and she goes for it. And I just, I'm trying to be that inspiration. Yeah. Well, you are. And you brought up another point about miscongeniality and things like yeah. that. You know, sometimes, and I'm so glad you won being that <laughs> because a lot of times they want to give you like, you're the nice person, but you weren't strong enough on your question or you're not maybe the look or, you know, and you were everything. And it's just like, it just makes it, it just makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. My coach was like, you do understand that no one who wins congeniality wins. You just broke the mold. I and yeah. I was like, well, I just went in and I tried to be my authentic 100% mm -hmm. self. And I had practiced. It takes a lot of practice to go mm -hmm. into that interview mm -hmm. and know your platform, know your yourself yeah. inside and out. And we did the prep work. Right, and not that. be nervous or, you know, the things that happen when mm -hmm. the real deal is in front of you. Yes. You know, it takes a lot. You're so right. Well, listen, <laughs> tell us about your platform and yes. what have you done over the last year? So I am vice president of Dress for Success, mm -hmm. and I'm also the founder of Vets for Success. I love it. I come from a military family. Yes. My grandmother was one of the first Navy waves. Really? Yes, she was. I'm a Navy wave retired. Yes. Come on oh, now. Yes. Oh my God. I'm not gonna leave you out. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. yes. My grandmother Marcella Hanahan was one of the first wow. waves. She got on a train by herself, God lied about her age. Her. And she got on a train in Kansas and joined the waves. And she's why I have no fear yeah. to this day. And yeah. so it's my job now as vice president of Dress for Success, mm -hmm. and especially my vets. My vets yes. come back, and when we give them the career yeah. skills and the interview and the interview outfits, and then they yeah. go back out into the world and be such contributors to our society. That's Girl, don't start me tearing oh, up. Yeah. I see you tearing up. I'm not looking at you for a minute. Because we're going to talk because I have people. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Because of a course. lot of people forget about the veterans. I had a support system. But a lot of veterans come out and they are lost. They are, you know, prejudiced against with the government giving them five friggin' lousy points. They deserve 1,000 points. They you know what I'm saying? Everything. They yeah. raise their hand to protect the country so everyone can do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, come on now. <laughs> so they come to us and we give them the job training skills to kind of, we work a lot with Lowe's okay. is one of our great partners. So because they have yeah. all of the best training, they can work under pressure. They are excellent team players. They have, they're just, I would want them on my team. So they come to Dress for Success <laughs> and work with us and really get back into what their best yeah. skills are. So yeah. it is my pleasure. It's my honor to do. Yeah. And yeah, we're busy yeah. actually. Now that I think about yeah. it, I hear and I hear stuff. the passion between the two of you. And of course, another thing, military, we wear uniforms. So sometimes, more than off, more than less, they don't even know how to dress or what to dress. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. this is sometimes awesome. I don't know. What to <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I have team members that help me. Yeah. Well, y'all are great. Look, I want to bring the elephant out the room. Let's okay, I want to talk about something. Right. Now, y'all tell me. I can start it off since I'm not a queen per se. Um, talk about Miss America and her comment um, that she felt that you should not be able to become a contestant or compete if you had a child or married. 
So I'm going to ask you about that, okay? Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to say, you know, I give my opinion a lot on this show um, because I don't want people to think I'm just, you know, being a coward and I'm putting it on other people. I want you to know I'm in the game too. So, you know, at one time back in the day, they only had blonde hair, blue eye, single women, no kids, no marriage. Them days are gone. Okay, even though they both sitting here with blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, those days are gone for it to be across the board because there's too much diversity and beautiful women across the board. But here's what I'm saying. For her to say something like that, it just shows a lack of maturity or maybe her upbringing, maybe the women in her life were telling her that. Who knows where she got it from? Maybe it was prompted from her coach. But the bottom line, we all know the diversity of this country. All shades of soul, all shades of color, all shades of beauty. And having a baby... Or being married should not be a part of you not being able to or prerequisite not to compete. That's my opinion. Anybody want to take the floor? I have, <laughs> I have a point to that. Well, that is what is so great about the Miss for America. Part of what we do is because you can be divorced. Mm -hmm. You can have a child. Yeah. Your life starts when you start doing big life things. And yeah. I think that only adds to your title. Yeah. I think that... Times are a changing. You gotta grow with yeah. with flow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I think why the Miss for America system yeah. is so awesome because you have women who've lived, yeah. who've had experiences, who have careers, mm -hmm. who've done things with their life, and they're killing it. Yeah. They're doing amazing. Yeah. And they're vibrant. Yeah. You know, you can tell like the passion in the two of you. Mm -hmm. I can feel that, and that's what the judges felt. Mm -hmm. It's just you know became more as you've been in walking and talking mm -hmm. in your in your crowns. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do you feel yeah. about that? So, so this is this is my second pageant, and when I started looking into pageantry, I looked at the Miss America, I looked at Miss USA. Mm -hmm. I'm 34 years old, mm -hmm. so I am too old to compete in either of those. And so when I found the Miss for America, which was 18 and over, or is 18 and yes. over, not married, no age cap, I was like, let's let's come go. on now, because <laughs> I you know. I get it. If younger, I wasn't ready for any of that. If you had asked me ten years ago, talking about you know your your ten years yeah. ten years ago, I, oh you would have you're you're gonna be a queen, yeah, right? <laughs> you know. But I've been able to experience so much and to not be twenty years old and going after a queen yeah. and being a miss, mm -hmm. you know that's that's huge. Mm -hmm. And um, in competing to be Miss for America, there were I mean there were where was everyone from age eighteen mm -hmm. to age probably forty five fifty, mm -hmm. and we were all on stage and we were all there and we all got to know each other and mm -hmm. it was a very positive experience yeah. so you know just because you know you are divorced or you're married or you have kids or you don't have kids mm -hmm. that doesn't define you as a person come on now it's a piece of yeah. who you are yeah. but it's not the whole thing mm -hmm. because you can still go out in the community and you can still wear a crown and you can mm -hmm. still get prettied up and you can still yeah. enjoy that mm -hmm. and one of the reasons I got into it was because I wanted to give back to the community yeah. and what better way than to wear a crown and yes, sash because people mm -hmm. love it and, people and, love Y'all yeah, look this beautiful. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also wanted to share, um, you know, back in the day also, and when it was required to be so young with the chauvinistic type of world that that used to be and surrounding, um, they probably took advantage of a lot of women as well. So in my opinion. So as you get older and you've lived, as you said, mm -hmm. and you know better, you do better, and you protect yourself better, and you pre represent yourself better. So, yeah, this is awesome. You know? It's amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. So what have y'all learned? <laughs> the person before you were crowned mm -hmm. and the person you are now, what would you say to the person before the crown to pre prepare her for what you're doing now? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> Come on now. I'm not going to be easy on you. <laughs> I, think that, I think my public ability to bring my message across mm. has exponentially grown. I'm able to rock a mic, yes. get my message out there, my platform, and I have now the confidence and strength, even though I'm a TV host, you know, I'm in the public a lot, having this title has yeah. really given me the strength mm -hmm. to get my message across, especially for my veteran. Yes, girl, <laughs> yes, come on now. And also when my daughter watches me leave the house and I, you know, yeah, adjust put my the crown, crown on, and I'm like, okay. Mama's gonna go out into the world and do big things. Yeah. That's just given me so much confidence, and my heart is 
completely full. That's awesome. And then Megan comes over and then yeah. we go and do something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say this. I did get to know all the women and each and every one, not one exception, were beautiful women. Yes. Inside and out. So Raquel does her due diligence. <laughs> she sure does. But I will say this. There were only about four or five of you, including the two of you, that were so humble. So humble. I don't even think you believed you won. <laughs> the way that you was looking, you were like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all are so humble, so giving to other women. You know, um, I forget what was happening. We were all on the back side, and everyone was kind of checking each other out, making sure they looked good. And you were one of, one of the two or four or five that were doing that. And so it just goes to show you deserve this title. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I'm so Thank proud you of you so both. Much. Anything you want to say? To the people who are watching or will watch this video broadcast and to give the way to get a hold of you as well. I think if you're ever thinking about getting out of your comfort zone and doing something big, you might want to think about it. I mean, I'm almost 42, so you're ne it's never too late to do, mm. to get the job, to get the man, to get the crown. Come on, get, girl. It's never too late late to go yes. after anything so yeah. i think that's what i want the people to know yes yes and i'm at nikki noya um that's where you can find me or on uh the jet set tv yeah. n-i-k-k-i-n-o-y-a yes <laughs> <laughs> and what about no, you Dora? so i would say i so i came into this to give back and all of that and i gained so much more i gained a lot more confidence mm. i was able to look inside myself and see who am i mm. who do i want the judges to see me as and to really package that all yeah. together one of my goals as, as i became miss dc was to be more vulnerable because mm. typically i That's like good. to be like oh i'm just i'm confident That's you know <laughs> so i, I started started yeah. writing blogs and uh -huh. have blogs on my website where i've been able to be more vulnerable and really talk about some of the stuff that i've been through okay. in hopes that it'll help like other people get through it but mm -hmm. um april 4th at the kennedy center yes. is yes. the next yes. miss dc you might want to sign up yeah go to definitely miss, sign yeah, up it, it has DC been it has yeah. been an incredible experience yeah. one of the best experiences of my life yeah. and I, i've i've done a lot um, yeah. in my short 35 yeah. 34 years on this earth um but one of the best experiences of my life i've gained a lot of friendships yes um, you know met a lot of different people yeah. was able to give back and mm -hmm. just an incredible incredible yeah. platform so thank you so much for you know all you do as oh, well yes, you're thank you welcome. for being a part of it yes. thank you yeah I live vicariously vicariously <laughs> through every woman when I'm on that stage. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, I go through that, you know, hoping nobody trips and all the stuff, you know, because you want everybody to win, mm -hmm. you know? So thank you both. Thank you so much. Of course, thank, thank you. Thank you, Raquel Riley Thomas, yes. the founder and president of this wonderful establishment. And ladies, we're not going to see the last of you on this no. show. Do you want to try it on? Oh, okay, all right. Hey, hey. I'll try it's it. It's heavy, actually. You, you want to crown me? Yes. I'll sit here like I don't know. I heard my Oh, I just heard my name. Yes. Oh. <laughs> hey, do the wave. The wave. <laughs> Did I do that? The wave. The wave. We'll be right back with a wonderful new R&B singer. You don't want to miss Jamani Love. <laughs> My mother, I wanna know have I made you proud And to my father, I wanna know have I ever been a problem child And to my pastor, I've been trying to be in church a little more And to my lady, just have patience God's still working on me now I ask for forgiveness from anybody that I may have heard wrong I've done Putting it behind me There are some things I gotta get right mm -hmm. Loose ends need to be tied up mm -hmm. It's been a roller coaster ride mm -hmm. But I'm gonna hang on mm -hmm. I was thinking the other night oh. What if my life was being graded what, if, what would it say on my progress report? What would it say on my progress report? All my teachers, thanks for taking extra time out with me To my producer, thanks for keeping a young fella on the beat And to the soldiers, going out there and risking your life for me 
It's a my lady, just have patience, cause God's still working on me now. I ask for forgiveness from anybody that I forgot to mention. Come and look at my long list. There are some things I got Eventually, I'll get to you. Losers need to be. Oh, 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 it's oh, 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 But for some reason I feel there's so much room for improvement So I'ma go find those burnt bridges There are some things I gotta build get back right. up again Loses need to be I gotta tie it all up Hold on But I'm gonna hang I'm on gonna stay I was gonna the other night I was just thinking What if my life what would be great what if Progress report. I wonder, wonder what it would say. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Nail and a Friend show. I just took my crown off. <laughs> We just had two queens on the show, and it was a phenomenal segment. And uh, anyway, now I have another queen bee uh, who is rocking it in the R&B industry, and I'm so glad to have you here on behalf of B&B. Oh, look, B&B, m and Management <laughs> <laughs> with Warren Morris, my dear friend. And so how are you, beautiful? Oh, good. Good. Uh, thank you for having me on such a beautiful platform. You're welcome. You remind me of my niece, Ariel, the... Beauty, the apple face, the dimples gone now. <laughs> Thank you. That youth, that youthful beauty. Thank you. <laughs> so listen, um, tell me how, first of all, how did you get involved in the music industry? To be completely honest, I just started this like five months ago. Wow. Yeah, we dropped, I dropped my first single on September the 2nd. Wait a minute, then, your first been... single in mm -hmm. five months? Mm-hmm. You with the real management, yeah. you with the, the real management <laughs> <Yes>. team. <laughs> I dropped my first single five months ago, and ever since then, it's been off. Well, now, how did this get started? It didn't just start five months ago, right? Yeah, I've been singing since I was, like, five, five years old. I didn't sound good. No. <laughs> I didn't. Like, I used to yell and scream in the house, and my parents would be like, Jordan, stop. And my brother and my siblings, they were just like, oh, my gosh, she's so annoying. And then around 12 years old, my voice started developing. So, really? Yeah. So you were the one in the mirror with the hairbrush and all that? <laughs> that was me. That was definitely me. Well, so growing up, who was your support? Um, if everybody, you didn't have the voice yet until about mm -hmm. 12. So who was the one, you know, encouraging you on? Well, around this time right now was my brother. He mm -hmm. got me to start singing, but my grandmother always loved my voice. Is your brother the one I met earlier in the studio? Yes. Okay, yes. yes he's he a is. nice guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was your grandmother? Yes, my grandmother. So tell us a little bit about her and how did she, how did she play a part in your life? She's as far a as this phenomenal industry? woman. Like she does literally everything. She helps everyone to the best of her ability. Um, she's a singer as well. Mm. They have a gospel group, the James Family Singers. Come on now. Yeah, they're a gospel group. They've been out for so long. Wow. Yes. Yeah, but she gave a nice little plug there. Mm -hmm. But see, hereditary. <laughs> yes, it's hereditary. <laughs> Runs in the family. So tell us about this first single. Problems, the baby of the group. That's um, the baby, okay. I'm a neo soul artist, mm -hmm. so it's a song for every age group. It's very soulful. Okay, now yeah. the, the title is Problems. Now, I'm not going to ask you your age, <laughs> but you look pretty young. Yes. So, what kind of problems created this title? I'm a great storyteller, <laughs> and I see other people's lives and I try to tell like come on, their perspective from yeah. their perspective and their stories okay and like the issues they face mm -hmm. and like relationships so mm -hmm. yeah I just took inspiration from there wow yeah yeah that's big girl stuff <laughs> thank you yeah you know you look so young but you have the wisdom 
and the aura of someone that's older. Yes, I'm very mature. Yeah. Are you the oldest? No, I'm the youngest. Oh, the youngest. Oh, that's what you mean by the baby of the bunch. I thought yes. You the, I thought <laughs> the, you song the song is the baby. Oh, oh the yeah. baby and the baby. Uh huh. I have three <laughs> singles out right now. Wow. So tell us about the other two Candy and Problems Candy. Dang, I done forgot my own song. That's all right. Girl. All I need, Problems and Candy, are my three singles right now. Wow. So, mm-hmm. Candy. You know I got to hear about that one. Candy was <laughs> dropped on Halloween. Yeah, so it was very ironic. It was dropped on Halloween. Mm-hmm. It's very bumpy. Like, you can listen to it. It's very uppity. Like, I love that song. Okay, and what's and, the ambiance of it? What, what is it talking about? It's talking about, like, the good things about a relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, when you're first starting and everything's all jolly and happy. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. That's like the beginning. That's awesome. mm-hmm. Well, look, I've been told, I, I read up on you, I, they sent me some things, and you are doing quite a bit more than just singing. Yes. So let's talk about the entrepreneurship. I'm a hairstylist. Mm-hmm. I've been a hairstylist since I was 12 years old because I got to get some money. Yeah, and your yeah. hair is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I did it myself. So, yes. <laughs> ding, ding. Yes. You put it over here if you want to ding, ding. <laughs> yes. I'm a hairstylist. I do a lot of hair because mm-hmm. I try to juggle that with school mm-hmm. and my singing career. So Okay, so mm-hmm. is school, singing career, man in your life? No. <laughs> not right. Caught y'all on that Well, one. I have a crush for uh-huh. not. Not going to get that confused, but yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of crushes on you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, there are. So tell me, you know, a woman of your age, five months in the business, dropping her, her, um, Mm -hmm. you know, CDs already. What are some of your immediate goals? I want to expand my platform to the world. Mm. I want to showcase my talents. Come on. (laughs) I want to showcase my talents to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I am going to allow you to do that today. Yes. And we're going to hear from her live on the Renee Allen and Friends show on WLVS. I'm excited. I'm excited. Because I heard a little bit of the yeah. MP3, so I know you can blow. Yes, yeah. I can. <laughs> <laughs> so anything you want to tell us about a particular hurdle you had to get over um, in your journey? Trying to manage friendships mm. while juggling all the things I was like. I recognize I lost friends due to like my time management, so I, I improved on that. Yeah. yeah just juggling friendships because I'm a, I'm a teenager, so yeah. I gotta juggle friendships and my entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a big, it was a big, big thing to conquer. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I want to bring you. up something that's very important because you haven't lived long enough to really have a lot of haters. Mm-hmm. But believe me, if you keep going the way you're going. You know, they'll be there. Yes. So tell me, have you had any experiences with someone who tried to block you or throw shade or stop your career or discourage you? Did you have any of that yet? Um, I have not experienced a lot of that. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory. No. Lord have mercy. God the hasn't let getting it touch better. me yet. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're blocking that. <laughs> Gotta well, let block me tell that you. negativity. I'm just letting you know. Whatever's happening, you're with a good management team, your grandmother's spirit's here, your family, your brother. So you really have you really have probably a clearer path than most to avoid a lot of that. Yes, I do. So should you come across that, just know to just ignore it. Yes. Ignore it and pray about it. Mm -hmm. Keep it moving. Because I I have a feeling you're gonna be going pretty far. Thank you. Anything you you wanna say to any of the young artists or older artists that wanna start a career? Do it. (laughs) <laughs> just do it like don't wait do it your time is now you need to get out there yeah because nobody's waiting on you but yourself come on now nobody's waiting on you but yourself mm-hmm. that's like the man in the mirror yeah come on i'm loving you <laughs> <laughs> i love you <laughs> i like a little sis yeah. look we're gonna take a short break we're gonna come back and hear jamani love sing <laughs> Tranquility 
Oh, the canvas can do miracles Just you wait and see Believe me It's not far to never, never land No reason to pretend That if the wind is right We can find the joy of innocence again Oh, the canvas can do miracles Just you wait and see Believe me Sailing takes me away It's the best of me when I'm sailing, yeah. All caught up in the reverie, every word is a symphony, won't you believe in me? Welcome back to the Renee Allen and Friends Show here on WLVS Radio. We just had a phenomenal interview with Jamani Love, a wonderful, what did you call Neo? Neo Soul. Neo Soul. I said R&B, Neo Soul. <laughs> um, phenomenal singer. And yeah. so I just want to bring you to the world on behalf of m M&M Management with my boy Warren Morris. Look, y'all are going to enjoy it. Sit back and relax. Love you, girl. Thank Jamani you. Jamani Love, y'all. Thank you again, Renee, for inviting me on such a beautiful platform. And make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, J-I-M-A-N-I-X-L-U-V, Jamani X Love. <laughs> I don't know 
so feel I had my heart on the banner It feels like I'm chasing for you Instead of racing What the hell are we supposed to be? My heart, baby Don't you miss Do you deserve me? I hope you maybe yeah, As we go Day by day by day by day by day Feels like we're drifting our way From love, from trust You still think about us All these things All these things That made us what we were Instagram at Jemani X Love. Thank you very much. Now we rolling out. We're meant to be. It's my second song. Get it on SoundCloud. <laughs> There's a feeling I need to get out of my heart Seeing my fake love Loving my doubt show Having no way to buy struggles It's bringing me down, down so I used to be to you, yeah you run into me Thought we would get into me Girl, I felt all this energy Guilty acting innocent Well, I think you fall in between We used to be so in between it just wasn't meant to be It just wasn't meant to be Hey Ooh. Hey It just was not meant to be Ha, ha, ha.